Welcome to the 3 a.m. podcast, my friends. My name is DJ. My name is Charlie. My name is Sean. My name is Kalima. Welcome, hey. Kalima, to this episode of 3 a.m. It's good to have you back, my guy. Kalima's back. Good Young Kalima. Back. Aloha, <laughs> young brother. Kia ora. Um, Yeah, Scary Stories podcast, uh, comedy podcast, a mixture of both. Uh, you should already know what it is. Uh, this week we, wait, I want to hear Kalima. Kalima, how you been? I've been good. What's new? Um, I have two kids now. What? Congrats, my brother. It was weird, man. Like me and Hannah were sitting in a van. We bought a van. What? What? Okay. What kind? Uh, Toyota Sienna. Bro, Uh, that's the goals. Bro, luxury. Were were you (laughs) hyped? Were you, cause some people are like, this is. This is this is my life now. Yeah. So then, was a little bit of both, bro. I was at, at first I was like that, and then I just accepted it because we were driving the two kids around in a Scion, a toaster. Is yeah. that the is that the square? Yeah, yeah. bro. Your nice. cube just yeah. moving around. So, yeah, I've accepted it. I feel good about it. But um, bro, anyone who like dude, caps on the the minivan is stupid. Like it's dumb. Dude, it's, it's purely so comfortable. It's roomy. Yeah, it's roomy. You yeah. can lean back. You, you have like eight screens around. in that shit. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> has their own screen when you play Switch. It's so Super Smash. nice. Anyone who's saying it's just like way tied up into the aesthetic of a minivan. It's you, like get you, over yourself. You got the yeah. you got the bucket trunk space. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah food on can, food on food <laughs> on snacks. You have like Oof. four rows. You can play games in the middle too. You yeah. can put all the seats down. Someone could sleep in the back, camp so, out. Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah. much room for And activities. mom's always got like mirrors <laughs> everywhere. Like at any angle, I yeah. can see my children <laughs> and they can see me. Yeah. Put your Thanks, damn seatbelt on. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm two. <laughs> you are supposed to put my seatbelt on. <laughs> oh, shit. But congratulations, Kalima. A new addition. Had a new child. Your wife. Everything went well. Everyone's healthy. Yeah, super. Cool. Yeah. We're happy. Thanks, uh, you were running the podcast for us. You were helping us with everything. And uh, we're glad to have you back. Might be a more often thing. We'll see. You're a new father. Fingers crossed. So we'll see. Yeah, but we'll see. We're glad. I heard some shit about you. And I, I'm not salty. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, But yeah. I heard something. <laughs> what? I don't even know what you're about to bring up. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, I know what it is. So we hadn't seen Kalima for a minute, and we went to this beautiful concert the other day, and, and Kalima was like, hi, dude, hi. Hey, I got recognized. <laughs> threw that shit in my face. <laughs> Almost as if he knew, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We had, we had like... I think there were two listeners at that concert. Dude, wait, I, for I, real? Dude. <laughs> two listeners at the concert because they posted it on their story. You know, I was sitting up in my chair. One, like of, them this. Was, one of them was Camille, who I was, was sitting in my who chair, was, like who this. did the 3 p.m. episode. <laughs> so at one point, Charles stands up like a meerkat <laughs> and just turning I'm around. Like, this bitch yeah. looking for my puma. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, dog? And he's like, I'm looking for listeners. <laughs> And guess how many flocked to us to say hi to me? None. <laughs> Zero. None. The <laughs> f- uh, but Kalima got uh, recognized. You want to tell us about it? My a voice. Bit? It was super weird. I just want to know what it's like. Just to describe like every emotion <laughs> yeah. really slowly. Um, it was beautiful. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. It was, I was talking to a group of people and mentioned that I'd been doing the pod. And then um, one was like, you're Kalima, right? Just by my voice. Whoa. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, I recognize that beautiful, sexy, manly, hot voice. <laughs> hey, we call we all can hope for one day, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll, cool. you'll get there. Man. Cool, yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> Sweet. Well, we're glad you're here. Uh, yeah, we're we're glad you're here. We're glad you got your van pulling up in the whip. Nice. Uh, yeah, three three rows deep. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, Thanks, congratulations. Guys. Super appreciate. Um, everyone in chat saying you a thirsty boy, Charles. No, um, <laughs> I'm super chill. Uh, one of these times I want to set expectations on what it's going to be like if you do meet us in person. So like I can guarantee you awkward handshakes. I'll talk about that more another time. Uh, real quick. I wanted to like a little bit of update. I think a couple streams ago, we open postcards on stream. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a ton of old ones. From, they were oh, really from dope. Ghost. Uh, from Ghost Watch. Yeah. He said if anyone's interested, because some people were asking in chat. Our boy Paul. Hit him up straight on IG, Ghost Watch, and he will, he's like 
cleaning out a lot so he can hook you up with a lot of postcards. So if anyone's interested, old school postcards, hit up Ghostwatch on IG. Sick. Just wanted to get that out. And check out his content too. Yeah. He puts out a zine monthly. It's sweet. He sent us copies. We have them. More zines than we've ever put out. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Respect. Uh, July 4th, this past weekend, our nation's birthday. Uh, our nation's birthday. <laughs> oh, you said it, dog. <laughs> Continue. Just kidding. Uh, that's funny. Me and Kalima are like the median between me, you, and Sean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally uh, the, the Pacific median. You're the median yeah. between my westward expansion. <laughs> and Miles is eastward. Sleeping dragon in the east. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, how's, how's the holiday? What do, what do we think about the holiday? First of all, I'm going to start by saying every, you know, if you love this holiday, that's cool. I support you and I love you. We can <laughs> all have different opinions and it doesn't take away from your opinions. Having said that, <laughs> uh, I've decided because I don't have children. Fourth of July for me is mad mid. It's like, whatever. Like I have zero pull to go watch fireworks. And a barbecue's dope, but like we do that every weekend. Yeah, it's like for <laughs> July I, every what weekend. I need a holiday to tell me to barbecue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they shall barbecue it's or, like, or yeah. a weekend. Yeah. The three of us, I think, share the same opinion on fireworks. Yeah. yeah. That they're overrated. Yes. I can't okay, so I've thought a lot about this because like someone was pushing back and like they're magical, they're fun. Like, can't you just watch them and and like admittedly, they admitted that like fireworks for them a lot of emotional ties to memories as kids sure. or like it reminds them of grandpa, things like that. And it's like, that's cool. But take that away. I have, because I don't have that. A lot of emotional like connection to when the canyon was on fire <gasps> after the fourth, when I was living in a cabin. Yeah. That's this why is a true I, story. Yeah. yeah, it's a true story. The connection is PTSD. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like I don't have an emotional connection. So all I'm doing is as an adult, Every time a firework goes off, I think there's a thousand dollars. There's another thousand dollars. Or I'm thinking, aren't we in a drought? Isn't it the driest? Like, don't we live in a high won't desert? This light <laughs> us all on fire <laughs> so, everywhere. As a child, you can just watch it and be uh, like ignorantly, blissfully amazed. But yeah, as yeah, as yeah. like a lame ass old adult, I'm just like, this is expensive and dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at currently in life. When I have kids. I know that the magic will come back and I will be happy for their happiness. That's where I'm at with the 4th of July. We drove home. That drive home was dope though. It was because like, there's this one road that we kind of drive up and around over the mountain. You could see both you valleys. See, yeah. Everything. And thousands of fireworks. That's pretty cool. It was, it was cool. With that um, being said, that costs a lot of money. <laughs> You're old. That's bro. fine. That's fine. That's that's the most American thing to <gasps> throw money in the air and watch it burn Be careful, before your brother. Eyes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, it, we got one day a year to splurge like that way. You know, we have a unique opportunity. We have two people who grew up in Hawaii <laughs> who identify as Hawaiians. How do y'all feel straight up about Fourth of July? How do you feel, Kalima? Oh, just passing it right. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. It went like this and just straight. Fourth. Okay, the fourth in Hawaii is like annual fireworks day. Is it nice? I feel like there's no like nobody's celebrating America. Nobody's doing it's just fireworks. Like oh yeah, just yeah. Like let's have fun at barbecue. No, no one's yeah. wearing American apparel. No, 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 and barely any flags. I feel like. Yeah. Excuse me. Why not? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. How long do you have? <laughs> um, but I feel like when I when I first moved up to Utah, I was like experiencing. Fourth of July, how I always saw it in the movies, like in San Oh, Mark. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was dope. I actually you, like the holiday. Utah loves July 4th. Take it very serious. Yeah. As July 4th, as July 4th can get. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. 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 It's I, July 4th almost every day here. Like, we have the trucks flying the flags every <laughs> single day, you know? Yeah. Just blasting their smoke right in your face. <laughs> trying to, trying to make from the stop Trying to make the country great again, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's uh, Utah. I pushed against 4th of July, but like my push for 4th of July, it's dope when everyone's unified in one thing, yeah. celebrating, yeah, yeah. doing one thing. That's like a really fun feeling mm -hmm. and that doesn't happen. It happens less and less. I feel like as the country gets more and more divided. So that's dope. I do love that regardless of what it is. So I was at the gym like the morning of the 4th and looking at the TV screens, like next to the stair step I'm on. And already it was what was going wrong. And I was like, are you guys 
kidding me. Just like in the country or like? Yeah. Oh, I was like, I know canceled. What you're Fox yeah. canceled. CNN yeah. canceled. I hate all of you. They're just focusing on the negative still. Yeah. So there was no like unification. It was all division. Yep. Whoa. Made me so mad. Had yeah. to get off the stair stepper <laughs> and go home. <laughs> yeah. I'm mostly just indifferent. To me, it's like, hell yeah, with day is off of work. No work. That's like the best part. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah there you go. Going back to fireworks, what I don't like is just going through thousands of people. It's hot and you're sweaty and it's late. <laughs> and thousands of people and then you wait and then you watch fireworks and they're cool. And then you got to go through it all again and then leaving, parking and getting out through a thousand cars. That's not worth That doesn't make the fireworks worth it. Gotcha. So it sounds like it'd be you're way better watching it from like the back of my house if I had a good view or something. You know, it sounds like you're d- describing Coachella to me, like or like a festival. <laughs> it's like hot and people. And it's like, <laughs> the only difference is like I guess the live performance is better than like fireworks. <laughs> Dude, I got a, I got a picture for you. <gasps> um, speaking of the wonder of children, and that's why you like it. This is my daughter. Wow. She uh, looks like okay, she so just that's, got stabbed. That's worth it though right there. Yeah, so, 100%. Let me see. So Kalima's showing us a picture <laughs> of his daughter <laughs> who's just like the look of magic and wow. <laughs> looks like Do you guys see it? Chat? So surprised <laughs> to see fireworks. That makes it worth it. Okay. 100%. That's That cool. would. But like otherwise, I don't have kids. I don't have kids. I don't, I don't care. have money. Yeah. I don't have <laughs> I don't have patience for I don't people. Have fire uh, insurance. <laughs> yeah, all those things are Here's the other no thing, for dude, me. In Hawaii, we do the fireworks. Every uh, like every all the people do the fireworks from their own home. Like uncles throwing up. Yeah, <laughs> everybody throwing yeah, grenades. Yeah. Out. yeah, yeah. So it's like I don't want to have to go someplace to do what I can already do at home. Mm. Like Hawaii, things don't catch on fire because it's yeah, so say, wet there. Way uh, safer. My sister, Brittany, said her fourth, she has a, mm, in a video game, she has a police scanner and she might listen to that often and like hear what's going on. <laughs> and she said, uh, dude, she was like, it was pop. And they were like, yeah, that's what fireworks they have do. To in- <laughs> they have to investigate every single one to make sure it's not like, uh, what's it called? Gunshots. Aerial, aerial oh, ones yeah. are outlawed in, in California. California. So it's like if aerials go up, the whole unit has to go check it out. A lot of people are getting arrested, cited. I mean, it's illegal in Hawaii too. <laughs> yeah, but, but like so Hawaii many cops. people do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cops be doing yeah, it too. Yeah. They just be dealing <laughs> it from their trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just cut the, the so clock on the air. That's what I was going to bring up. She said she was listening and they discovered an Airbnb rented by someone with thousands of aerial fireworks in the Airbnb. Holy cow. That's and they tight. think someone came into the region got an Airbnb and was like selling them. Damn. Damn. Is that crazy? The, the bombs bursting in Airbnb. <laughs> Yay, bombs bursting in Airbnb. <laughs> That's funny. So anyway, it's wild. Fourth of July, fun. Sure. I like barbecues, so <laughs> I like toitles. Toitles. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Sweet. Anything else with uh Fourth of July? Let's move off no, it. Yeah. Guys, we posted a question to oh, yeah. IG. Sean has some questions from listeners. So on our IG in the last, what, was like Two less than ago. a week ago, yep. we uh, said, anybody got questions for us? And we got a couple of good questions. Let's hear More some. than a couple. I'll give you guys all shout outs. They better be good. And I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> but I'm going to get, what should we go? Like five, six, what, just whatever just it feels. One okay. at a time and we'll feel. So from Airglow. Hey, yo. First of all, shout out Airglow. Gifted us our lights. Also, man. go and he check out music. his music. It's fire. Yeah. So he asks, what's your spirit animals? <gasps> Very weird. You bring that up. Oh, and shit. And you'll find out later. Okay. We all have spirit animals. Dude, how much do you want to talk about it? Let's talk about how it, How big of a nerd do you want to reveal that we are? Bro, we, don't if care. they don't already know we're nerds, <laughs> then. <laughs> Fine, DJ, you take it. No, you're the one. <laughs> don't throw Dude, me like under your the thing. bus. You're excited to talk about this. I'm excited because I just drank like 200 milligrams. Okay, of then share. All right. Uh, on his mission, DJ joined a <laughs> brotherhood of elite of elite elders, uh, missionaries who bestow a spirit animal upon people, and they have a whole ceremony, a seance. It's weird and cultish, 
and only if the elders are present can they bestow upon you uh what's it called a spirit animal so dj has we were, done we that. were hyped about this you don't get it on the mission you don't have anything yes. <laughs> can't listen to music can't jack off you can't you can't talk to girls so you give each other animals <laughs> <laughs> spirit animals and so from that, DJ took that, what he learned on his mission and brought it home with them. And he's bestowed on all of us spirit animals and low key minds, racist and lame. DJ's like, you're Asian. So Asian animal. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm just kidding. Okay. The, the process in which this is uh, conducted is, Whoever's receiving the spirit animal sits in the middle of the circle, close their eyes, shut up. You cannot say a single yeah. word. Everyone who's participating and the only people who can participate are people who have their own spirit animals. Yeah. Everyone who's sitting around you goes through two phases. The first phase, they talk about your physical appearance, everything. Mm -hmm. Second phase, they talk about your personality. It's like fat dick. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. What can we give him? <laughs> Sorry. Girthy chode. Yeah. Um, and from that, they start talking about, is this on this, in the sea, on the land, in, in the, the air. air. And uh, slowly whittling it down, matching your personality and physical traits to, to, uh, to an appropriate animal. Yeah. And everybody has to be in agreement. So yeah. everybody thinks, thinks, thinks. They uh, discuss an animal and uh, you give your pros, you give your cons, and then you wait and then you count down three, two, one, and everybody says the animal. And if everybody says the same animal, then that's it. Yep. There can it's, be no dissenting. It's bestowed upon the person uh, by the power invested uh, in us as the spirit animals. And then you open your eyes and you make the sound of your newly. Uh, bestowed spirit animal. Yo, feel free to do this amongst yourself, listeners, in your own homes. Yeah. It's a fun game. So Charles is a Shiba Inu. Which actually, I'm just kidding. I like it. <laughs> uh, I just had to be, I had to pretend. Shiba Inu is a breed of hunting dog from Japan. Bitch. <laughs> a small oh, to I medium. Thought just, I, I thought know. it was just a home pet. I like, thought it was a meme dog. Sub, I thought it was just submissive. Yo, I hunted alongside samurai. I thought, okay? I thought it was just submissive. <laughs> not, 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 not. And a hunter. A, a meme. Sa tell me if this sounds familiar. A small to medium breed. <laughs> uh, your boy. He's a coin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Smiley. Uh, it's uh, native to Japan. Small. Alert, agile, copes very well in the mountainous regions and hiking trails. This shit is dope. I'm bred to be a hunter. Damn. So that's me, a Shibu Inu. Sean? You do yourself like that. I am a mountain lion, and some might call me a cougar. <laughs> Rarely ever seen, dangerous if it shows up. Only, once, only will be seen if it wants to be seen. It's true. When you do see me, it's too late. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> shit. As Real quick side note with mountain lions. Did you know that in the nature preserve in Hollywood is like a big ass muscular mountain lion? Oh, yeah, dude. It's like I heard about that. near Hollywood. Every, don't every major city have that? Mountain lions? It's called the zoo. Okay. <laughs> you idiot. You got me. <laughs> uh, DJ? I am the giant panda. Wow. I'm black. I'm white. <laughs> Chinese. Ch yeah. uh, you should be a carnivore, I but you I only take my time. I'm, I'm just uh, happy with what I have. Wow. Do you know that pandas, all pandas piss upside down? Same. <laughs> <laughs> Same. And they're not real. <laughs> yeah. That's true. They're fake. They're not real. Just like whole government caught, if fabrications. Caught, if you caught the, the new conspiracy, pandas aren't real. Yeah. Cool. So that's ours. Kalima, do you have one bestowed upon no. you or one that you feel? Yeah. One do you feel? No, I, I've, Damn. yeah, I haven't flushed it out. Damn. Are we about to, are we about to, <laughs> we can't do, we can't are do we about to do this live? <laughs> Why not? Cause it takes like an hour and a half. <laughs> Remember when we had to do freaking who is it? Kevin took forever because he hated what we we're saying. Cause he kept breaking the rules, opening his eyes and talking. He's like, okay, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the yeah. It's like, you're not allowed to talk. I know. It's like, stop talking. You can't. I will. <laughs> stop. Yeah. You get zero animals. You have no spirit. 
You're just an animal. <laughs> <laughs> so there's your question, Airglow. All right. Let's go Rachel Gartz. Shout out. What's up, Rach? Un- Seth's wife. Unpopular opinion Homie. lately. Well, I mean, we kind of went over this. Fourth Fireworks. of July. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Fourth of July mid. I had I had a spicy take that I was like workshopping in my head. I can't remember what it was, but I think we've talked about it at work. I don't know. If it comes to me, I'll bring it up. Okay. You okay. said Top Gun was not that good. I didn't see it. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> I was just being, uh, someone, someone came in the office and they were like, basing their identity as a human off of how good Top Gun was. And so I was just so like, everyone who and saw I, Top Gun. And I was kind of bored. So I was like, all right, let's do this. I think it's overrated. And I just like, he just like went off like for an hour and I was like, this is fun. <laughs> so yeah. To be fair, I really like Top Gun. Yeah. But like, my identity is still not Top Gun. Yeah. His, he was like, he was about to join the Air Force. After <laughs> that would be him. Navy, actually, but well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, from right, Matthew Dorado, what's the best cereal? Damn. And this is where we find out who's an idiot. <laughs> so easy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh is yeah. it? Okay. Oh, is, is it, it so easy? What, what, what's the best cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Dude, Whoa. that's a good actually, one. Actually, that's my favorite. That's okay. a good one, bro. Yeah. Um, Here's why. Here's a reason why. You don't only get delicious cereal. But like a delicious beverage. Yeah, that's cinnamon true. Milk. Yeah, it's the cinnamon oh, drink, dog. Or <laughs> Didn't we just like hate on horchata like four episodes ago? Probably. That's us though. We'll hate <laughs> no, on something. Horchata's I what? It. I, hate, I, with I hate on it. I'm like, it's like I don't know. Nah, horchata's good. It's almond milk of beverages. It's like all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Trying to piss off my Mexicano friends, dude. Cinnamon toast crunch, very top. Fire. Not mine. How about you guys? My go to is honey bunches. Honey bunches. I love honey bunches. A bunch. <laughs> A whole bunch. A bunch. <laughs> the child in me wants to say like Reese's Puffs. Because when that came out, I was like, fire. This is crazy. Yeah. This is so good. Now I'm like, Ugh. I feel like I'm eating candy and that's not good. I still am okay with that. Yeah. Wait, what's yours, Sean? Cinnamon Toast Crunch actually Ooh. is my favorite. Dude, what is the flavor of Cat and Crunch? It's the original blood from the roof of your mouth. <laughs> That's accurate. Mouth blood. But what's the actual flavor? Like sugar corn nugget nougat. Dude, yeah. Nougat? I don't know, bro. Nougat. That's a good question. You know, what is it? It's good, though. I that's mean, one of the, I think that's one of the best flavors. Yeah, yeah. It is good. Okay. What's the official flavor? No, of- the, I prefer not to know, <laughs> oh. but like just going, it's like going horse hoof. <laughs> you're like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> jello. Just is that what it is? Gelatin? Oh uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, nay. The cat and crunch More is like such yay. a, cat and crunch is like such a pedo name too. Ooh, oh, right. Yeah. He's of. a groomer. You want to crunch? Crunch I mean, it, you want me to crunch it ties me, Ken. <laughs> right? That's not. Yeah. All the kids are just yelling that. Crunch it ties me, Ken. Yo, that is weird. All the all, Stretch all the me, daddy. I, I, it's like the same. All of the uh serial cartoon characters like all have like one like they either go to AA or they just uh are popping pills all the time or they just can't be trusted. Tricks. Tony the Tiger. Tricks is a dude? thief. Uh, leprechaun. Yeah. Irish people suck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's a thing. <laughs> They're gingers. They're all gingers. <laughs> yeah. Soulless be demon. Let go of me lucky charms. Yeah. He's like, okay, well, you're leaving them out for the kids to grab. So, well, he's doing that for a reason, probably. Do you ever what? see Leprechaun? No. Like the movie? Oh, yeah, I have. With that cameo from Jennifer Aniston? Random. Super random. What other, ca- what other, uh, what other like heavy hitters in the cereal Dude, world? Dude, cuckoo for Cocoa Puss? I do My, like that boy. That's like a okay, yeah. I yeah. like Fruity Pebbles. Fruity, Fruity Pebbles, Pebbles solid. Dude, yeah. You but once again, good drink full of candy. Yeah, Dude, but okay, what are yeah, they? Yeah. Barney Simpson and Fred Simpson? Oh, yeah, it's a Flintstones. Right? Flintstones? Flintstones? <laughs> yeah. For, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So they were probably just like misogynists back in the day, right? Yeah. Probably. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they're cavemen. It yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. knock a woman out and make love to it in yeah. a cave. <laughs> and notice I said it, because that's how they like, treated women. <laughs> cookie crisp? Dude, cookie crisp cookie was crisp. a rare treat, <laughs> and I was always let down. Oh, Dude, yeah. Dude, I was yeah, going to yeah, say, yeah. it was mid to me. Yeah. Cookie like, cr- the only thing we ever got growing up was straight up cornflakes, because yeah. we got it for free. In like the eight-pound bag? 
and yeah, and it would turn to mush ten seconds after the milk hit the cereal. Oh. It was so I hate. Uh, I the gas away, the gas away family cornflakes is like actual corn just grinded yeah, up and just flakes. Flakes, flakes of corn. Yeah. It's like elote, homie. <laughs> just flakes of corn. Yeah, no, that's my least favorite. Cocoa Pebbles. I- Cocoa Pebbles. Cocoa Pebbles, Cocoa Pebbles. Yo, Cocoa Pebbles are, those also are good. Are good yeah. They also transform your milk into a nice drink. Yeah. yeah. That definitely puts you in a top tier. tier yeah. It's like if the milk's good after you're gone. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's I also good. like life, bro. Life is kind of good. Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. Cinnamon Life checks. Is, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Checks out. Oh. Checks out. <laughs> uh, I love how every cereal had a better value knockoff. Oh yeah, the Malto meal. Just like the mm. poor version. It's like instead of like cocoa pebbles, it's like boco pebbles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bat. Bobo pebbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Sometimes on a rare occasion they were better than the originals. I feel like that was the like a thing. Too. They came in like a pillowcase size thing like in the bag. back of the aisle. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild, huge, yeah. huge bag. Yeah. It's like how is this less expensive than like the tiny Somehow box? It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did I remember uh, we went on a field trip and they provided breakfast and lunch? Ooh. Uh, yeah, double feature, back to back. And breakfast was like the little box of cereal and like a little fruit um, and like a fruit roll up, which that's not food. That's not sustenance. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're a kid, you know, it don't really matter. You don't yeah. think about it. It's like, yeah. oh, fruits. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting getting rolled up. up. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. And uh, I was like one of the last in line because I wasn't paying attention. And by the time I got my cereal, one, it was like pops. Like the, the golden puff one with the oh, frog. Okay, yeah. don't front because I love pops. I don't like pops. <laughs> I love pops. It's so weird. It's like a, it's like it's styrofoam. Different. And I love that. You know? Yeah. It's like, and what flavor is that? I'm shrugging right now for the <laughs> listeners. <laughs> corn, no flavor, dude. dude. Yeah, sweet corn, I think, is that, literally yeah. like but flavor. But the worst part, you remember those old boxes, like the individual ones, uh-huh. where you could open it and then use it as a bowl? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. You open the bag sideways. And pour your milk in. Yeah. Well, by the time because I was last in line or one of the last in line, they didn't plan this ahead or some asshole kid took double, but there was no more milk. Oh. But there was orange juice. Nice. No. no. So I was like, this could be good. <laughs> you are <laughs> your <laughs> father's <laughs> son, dude. <laughs> that <It's> open liquid. <laughs> throw throw that sunny D right inside my pops. And uh it didn't make it better. But. Oh, uh. Sorry, I just, it's, it's a vivid worse. memory from my childhood. <laughs> just a fusion that shouldn't yeah. exist. Eating this on the beach. We were at Punalu. I don't know why that information is all about. <laughs> but three of our listeners are like, oh, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Other fusions of foods that should never be your dad in the show you the soy sauce and Going to the chocolate lava cake. cake. We were just talking about fusion foods last week. Yeah. Because we ate at that. Thai yeah. American barbecue fusion. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. One of our best friends, Reed from Thailand, my cousin, his dad is from the South. He's from North Carolina. His dad's like a diehard uh, barbecue. Like he's, he's one of those people who like is staunch about how they eat their food. Like it has to be South Carolina barbecue. So it's like vinegar, mm-hmm. yeah. vinegar based sauces and things like that. And then Reed's mom born and raised in Thailand and is arguably one of the best Thai food cooks I've ever experienced in my life. Been in Thailand, been all over. She's the top. So Reed is the human representation. Reed is the human representation of the the restaurant restaurant we we went went to. to. Crazy. And then that got us thinking, (laughs) what if each of us based off of our ethnicities were fusion restaurants? What What would that be? That look like you're just your Panda Express. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I'm not Chinese. Same, same. Dog. Let's go. Let's go around. I, I am English, Irish, French, and Japanese. That's going to be an interesting fusion. The first thing I thought of was a uh, escar gyoza. <laughs> so that's good for me. Uh, Sean, you are white, white, white and white yeah just a lot of white so dude, bland 
<laughs> there, we got potatoes. I'm just kidding. What are you actually? Oh, dude. Irish, English, French, German, Norway, Sweden. And I got like one ancestor from Northern Africa. So, oh, Ooh. the one percent, bro. Yeah. You need to exploit that more. <laughs> I, I, mean, <laughs> you, I mean, use that more. You got the pass, bro. Yeah, you got the pass. You got the my, pass. How Drop much percent it. is it? It's not even a percent. But <laughs> never mind. Hey, my <laughs> it's okay. Like great, great, great grandma was also like Shoshone Indian. <gasps> Why didn't you name that in your in your little? Well, we we're talking about like. Originally, I guess. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, my matter. brother, everywhere you <laughs> named has, it's besides like Northern Africa, everywhere you name, not known for food. Bro, it was like Algeria too. So it's not known for food <laughs> yeah. either. I bet you Algeria has some fire ass food. Probably Maybe. got some vinegary bread and dude, like they soup. pull it out of the sands of the Sahara. <laughs> yeah. Um, Honestly, though, it's like they be cooking with sand out there. All I like know, the coffee they put. He doesn't in the get sand? that. He only gets the white people's. <laughs> okay. What would Sean be? It's Wait, gonna go have, again. Start. So, what's the what's the biggest ethnic? The biggest part of your makeup is probably German. So we got German. some good brats, some schnitzel, my guy. Some schnitzel. Okay, okay. okay well, and what would beer. Sean be? I'll probably take second on Irish, which means potatoes. We're potatoes. Some good Guinness. Some more beer. More beer. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's what it is. It's potatoes, potatoes. schnitzel, and beer. So <laughs> that's tight. Do you know Haggis? Beer Fest. Oh, what that's is, my restaurant. Remind me what Haggis is. They take, I believe. I don't think I've had goat, it, but right? it's like goat stomach stuffed with like other parts of the goat. Ah, oh, so it's like a poor man foie gras, right? Yeah. Foie yeah. Gras. yeah. So you eat goat else instead of that. duck. You'd be some sort of stuffed because, like, uh, you think of bratwurst in Germany. Yeah, you got some brats. So some part of the body just stuffed with. Gee, it's going to be probably like <laughs> that's what you'd be like if we're going to like my Scandinavian ancestors. It's probably going to be something fish related oh. stuffed in these brats. <laughs> Somebody in chat said potatoes with mayo and boiled chicken <laughs> for sure. Sin salt. That's, why, sin we salt. Have, that's <laughs> why we have good beer though, so that we can chase all that trash <laughs> food. Like, you drown <laughs> out the yeah the shite drown food. out the sorrow. If you, if you count the the one person from Northern Africa, somebody said blackened ranch. <laughs> Black and yellow, black and I mean. <laughs> But I do have very strong, like, uh, ethnic uh, background in the South. So I'll take some good Cajun cooking. Okay. Like, Dude, that's the one. On my mom's side, I'm related to Jesse James and Jack Daniels. There you go. So we got some good whiskey. Dude, what do they eat in, like, Appalachia? Oh, dude, Besides meth. Raccoon, dude. <laughs> Besides each other. Meth and kill each awesome, bro. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's keep that off. You don't, you don't <laughs> hey, that. but we got good flavors of possum. Okay, what we'll give you it, is you're a bar. Yeah, you're a bar, bar food. A fusion <laughs> restaurant of Sean is a bar <laughs> with like yeah. sensible sides. <laughs> sensible sides. We got tater tots. Yeah, hmm. I, I feel good about that one. Uh, DJ, what's your background? Hawaiian, Chinese, Filipino, English, Norwegian, Tongan. Okay, I thought of one for you. What? DJ, if DJ was a fusion restaurant, he would be Domino's Hawaiian pizza. Oh, no. <laughs> Just hella colonized by the West. <laughs> Fake as <laughs> Whack. Culinary. Art. Pineapple on top. Yeah. So there you go. Double pineapple. <laughs> yeah. I think like like pe like pecking horse or something. <laughs> pecking horse. Dude, imagine walking horse by hanging. a full horse hanging in the window, yeah. dude. For those who are unaware, uh, Tongans are known to eat horse. And love it's, it. They love it. <laughs> they do. I grew up with my dad showing me my horse, and he's like, "This is your horse." I was like, "Oh, cool." He's like, "When we go to Tonga, We're going you to can eat meet it. it. Eat when it. We get to Tonga. Did he say eat it? I, no, or? meet, meet oh, it. Oh. He's like, we, he's like, when we go to Tonga, you can meet your horse. I was like, okay, cool. I meet the horse." On, on the dinner table. <laughs> you N E A T the horse. Dude, but horse is actually not bad. Horse is good. Yeah. It's like you can just really just melts in your mouth, dude. I've told the story before, but for those who haven't heard, when I lived in Australia, I was hanging out with some Maoris. Some Tongans were having a party. They invited us. We showed up. Uh, they were like straight from Tonga, like super fob and huge mountains of food everywhere on these tables. And they were like, Elders, like come eat. And we're like, dope. Eating, eating, eating. And I was like eating this really dark meat, like dark, dark. And I was like, mm, mm, mm. and I was eating ribs. <laughs> and I was like, yo, what is this? And they're like, oh, it's a, it's a it's horse rib. Pig. No, they were like, it's pig. Oh. And I was like, oh, sick. And I just, mm, mm. and the Maori dude with me is like, he's like, hey, 
like, what pig do you know with ribs that size? <laughs> <laughs> the ribs were like this big. And I was, I sat there and I was like, he's like, that's horse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept eating. <laughs> I'm just imagining you with like a giant rib. Oh, this is a pig. <laughs> uh, apparently, they like buy, like they sell, you can't buy horse in Australia to eat, but you can find like factories or like processing plants that will sell it as not human consumption. So it's like for, I don't know if you're like feeding animals. Live stock. They'll but buy that shit and throw it on the grill. Stock human nice. consumption? I don't know. Anyway, DJ, wait, would, wait, my, what my, is what is Norwegian food? Norwegian food I'm is like the least tapped into my Norwegian side. Is that like sardines? Pretty bland. Like is there's like, like seafood. You'll get like sardines and stuff like that. You also got they got bread. Bread is good, but like that's because they have bread. Yo, fuel. <laughs> no, to be honest, few things are better than just like fresh, warm bread and butter. Okay, yeah. straight bread. up, Rambus bread. One of the best things I had when I went to Iceland was this rye bread that they baked in the ground. So they like dig up I some volcanic that. ground. I some seen like that. Some it there, do that. And it'll just bake it there. And it's so freaking volcanic good. It tasted rye. like cake. It was so good. I'm starving right now. So like <laughs> it's making my, this ground bread's making my mouth water. So we got good bread, good seafood. Cake. Norwegians cook in the ground or uh, Icelanders. I, well, the thing with Doesn't Iceland is it was a bunch of Vikings raw from red Nor meat, like Norway yeah, that stopped by Ireland and took all of the best looking women and went to Iceland. Okay. Chill on that. That's what they <laughs> said. That was the actual Did you say chew that, on that. I said, chill on that. Oh. <laughs> those, those are my people. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I, did you decide anything that you'd be? Cause my, my best one was a Domino's Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> nah, just the pecking horse. I think that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Kalima background. Ooh, uh, Hawaiian, Maori, English, Irish, and Portuguese. I think a little Ooh. bit of Italian too. Portuguese. So meats, meats for the Portuguese. Some of those like cheese. Balls. What's the last one you said? Did you say Italian? I, yeah. Last time I checked ancestry. That's some had. fire flavors, dog. Yeah, dude. I looked out. But the Italian and the English like cancel each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can't use those. Yeah. Okay, what's Maori food? Bro, I have no idea. Veggie mite. Dude, it was like that. Uh, <laughs> Did thing we mean? had when we were there. Maori's cook in the ground too. I can't remember what they called an umu, something like that. But it's like potatoes, meat. They cook it in the ground. Yeah. Oh, hungi, mm. hungi, yeah, hungi. yeah, hungi. That's yeah. what they do. I've had it. It's good, earthy. Oh, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, but it was good though. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine a lot of the same of what Hawaiians ate, which is just like pork. Yeah, and I think they have deer. You there. mean pig? Yeah. You're not supposed to call it pork in Hawaii. Yeah. Cool. Pork. Kala pork. <laughs> uh, if y'all want some insider secrets of Hawaiians, don't ever call it Kalua pork. You call it Kalua pig. Did you see that on Avery's story? Yeah, I just saw that. Like, <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, Charles and I were talking about how Hawaiians are like the original grammar Nazis. <laughs> it's funny because they're always correct to people. It's like, it's Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. Not Hawaii. <laughs> it's Honolulu, not Hono. Hana, yeah. Honolulu. It's get out. Yeah, it's not stay. Out, not stay. <laughs> it's, and it's like, y'all realize you have pigeon English? <laughs> you bastardized an entire language. Can you tell yeah, me you how to speak? You have the audacity <laughs> to tell me how to speak yours. Yeah. Grind, it's eat. Yeah. <laughs> Pow, it's finished or whatever. <laughs> and it's like all the tourists saying that crap are the only things keeping us afloat as far as our economy. Like, <laughs> maybe don't correct them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, dude, whites like it. They like feeling like, you know, knowing, learning the culture. Yeah. Right? At least yeah. I do. Yeah. For oh, Hawaiians, like learning. No, number one most uh, enraging thing is like being taken over, you know, being annexed into the U.S. Number two is you mispronounce our language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're and neck and neck. close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> close second place. Okay. So you, you get a hungy full of, uh, what are some of your other ones? Okay. We don't, can't use English and uh, Irish. Italian or, Italian or Portuguese. Oh, yeah, so you're just a hungy full of meat. Which is dope. I do that. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fine. That's my nickname. Some ground meat. Then when all of you are done with your places, come to my place and we can get busted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I like it. What what foods do you hate? Not because you don't like them. Like you don't <laughs> like the taste. More so like you, you <laughs> like you personally don't, hate them? Yeah, you don't like you don't agree with their agenda. Uh <laughs> like on some spiteful shit. Yeah. Dude, that's like, interesting. Do you have an example? Uh, I, I'm thinking about like marshmallows. It's I, like you just hate like marshmallows. What is, <laughs> a mar what is a marshmallow? 
it's yeah. What is a marshmallow? I'm freaking out. Like, how is it a fluff ball? Of I, don't care, I don't care about you explaining what, what a marshmallow is to me. <laughs> it's just like, I should be able to look at it and know what it is. I look at a Dorito, it's potatoes and cheese processed together. <laughs> I look at a marshmallow. It's like, where the hell is this coming from? Dude, that came and from then a I marshmallow eat it. tree. Yeah. I eat it. And it's like, is this sticky? Is it soft? Is it hard? Like sometimes so, it's hard, bro. Yeah, it's oh, gross, dog. Yeah. <laughs> so just principally, you hate marshmallows. I just don't uh, agree with uh, with what they stand for. Yeah, with uh, their yeah, their place in the socioeconomic <laughs> world. You're racist against marshmallows. Yeah. Okay. Racist Sean, do you have whites. any? Uh, well, I mean, I'm pretty like open minded when it comes to food. In that, I'll eat everything that's put in front of me, and. You know, going back to my previous comment, cornflakes. You just hate cornflakes? It's history. Uh, Ten seconds you after one, you put you the had milk. One, one bad experience with a cornflake, and you just write off the entire race of cornflakes. If that one bad experience is with my age from one to 13, <laughs> yes. Uh, dude, for me, everything in my being and fiber, in my character, in my, in my like identity, should love hot Cheetos and Takis. But you don't. I it's I think I do love them, but I refuse to ever eat hot Cheetos or Takis. Like Maybe I will never buy it. I will choose anything else over it. I just don't I don't know why. Like logically I can't tell you why, but I, I don't S with hot Cheetos and Takis. <laughs> hot Cheetos for a long time was like my go to road trip snack. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I just have like a weird, like I'm very judgy. I think if we really want to pick into it. Hit, hot Eesh. Cheetos hit though. Especially when you're in like I know they're good. When you're in a vehicle like a confined space for eight hours Ugh. going a hundred miles an hour with like nowhere to go. I yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hot cheetos. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's like a recipe for you get it? farts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's, it's, it's Call me an purely anarchist. like a judgmental thing. I just like, don't F's with them. Cause you don't want to look like the guy, like the Asian guy with hot cheetos. Maybe that might be it. Dude. What, oh. about, what about, what about, about a, uh, what about like egg whites? Egg whites. I don't I mean, think I have a problem with egg whites. I don't, I don't think I have, have a strong problem. feeling like who they it. are. I love egg whites. I prefer the whole egg, but yeah, I why like, do you we'll eat just egg, egg whites? whites as God intended. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be healthier, right? Like the yolk has a lot of fat or something. It's high in fat. Uh, it's like you, old school science yeah. where they were like, the egg whites are the good for you. That's but actually it's like the yolk is good antiquated for you. data for <sighs> sure. Yep. yep. Antiquated data. It's uh, like how we're still learning that sugar. Egg whites are like the placenta, chicken placenta, right? Hmm. Just all the vitamins right there. It's like the flavor, flavorless part. Dude, not if, with enough salt. And no one, no who one likes- was it that was like, egg whites are the way to go? Us, white people were like, hey, we got to eat the egg whites. I'm <laughs> saying, damn, we just hate white food, you know? Yeah, that's the thing. The, we're just you, like, you are bringing up most- just white food. What? You yeah. are bringing up just marshmallows, yeah. egg whites. Uh, is this on purpose? <laughs> no, no, what are you trying to say? No. <laughs> Sean, I'm feeling very attacked yeah, right DJ's now. like, I hate mayo. Looks at Sean. <laughs> I do hate mayo, dude. What's going on? <laughs> I do hate <laughs> mayo. <laughs> mayo is egg whites. You're racist, bro. Mayo is egg whites. <laughs> That's science. That's a fact. That's not racism, dude. I just feel what like other, I'm What are some other white foods grandma. that DJ might hate? Uh, Vanilla milk? ice cream? Milk. Vanilla ice cream is not good. Whoa. Only when paired with stuff. Nobody's like, I just want vanilla. Nothing else. I actually know. Yeah, no vanilla. chocolate <laughs> scissor. No brownie with it. Bro, you might be racist. Any other white foods? You're telling me you disagree <laughs> with that. I love. You guys all, want to eat just I love, vanilla I love ice cream? foods of all color. I hate you so much. <laughs> all foods matter. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll, we'll we, maybe we'll that. dig dig deeper into this some other time, but I think we left it at a good spot. DJ hates white food. <laughs> Next, <laughs> a segue. I'm getting good. I mean, let's see. You want to uh, do another one or move on? I think I think we'll keep them for another week. Okay. Uh, before we jump into scary stories, we have a little bit of an update. Oh yeah. There's a couple things. This is actually crazy. A lot of our listeners sent us to sent this to us real quick. They turned on CERN. Do you know what CERN is? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to stumble through this and probably say a lot of false things. So feel free to correct me. CERN concerning uh, 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 (laughs) concern. 
Inc. Uh, CERN is this experiment they're running, a huge hydron collider. Where is it? In Switzerland or something. In Sean's people doing that shit up there. Uh, they're running an experiment that is potentially disastrous for the entire existence of the planet and all mankind mm-hmm. because they don't know what the results are. Well, we kind of do. 2012. Okay. So we're getting to that. 2019. So the idea is you take atoms and you supercharge them with energy and you zoom them around this huge like circle that they built, this machine. And those the idea is those atoms hit each other and break parts off. And they're trying to like isolate different parts of the atom. And what they're trying to do is basically, and this is to my third grade understanding, they're trying to recreate the Big Bang because they, they think that's how everything started. So they could potentially create black holes, entire universes. They don't really power. Know. Yeah. Unknown Fuel. power, negative energy. What's that shit called? Dark matter, dark matter. It's go like watch, we, go watch uh, angels and demons. Ooh. Yeah, dude. The God particle. So the last time they turned this bitch on was 2012, arguably when the world was supposed to end according to the Maya calendar and when a lot of people started thinking that we were put into another timeline. So a lot of people online believe that there's multiple timelines that we're all going on. We all were shifted to another one. And that's why we have Mandela effect, Mandela effect, Bernstein bears, Bernstein bears. Where was Mandela effect before 2012? Not a thing. Wasn't wasn't trending yet on vine or whatever the f is here on the talk. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So they did it in 2012. Even people like Hawking came out very adamantly and they were like this is not smart okay this is not what he said i'm paraphrasing (laughs) his already text-to-speech paraphrase he was like uh we just don't know the ramifications and it could have huge unintended consequences that like could affect us all yeah i.e wormholes black holes opening up in our existence stuff like that so last time was 2012 then they shut it down people stopped talking about it people stopped thinking about it well lo and behold July they did it 5th, again. They were like, we're, we're turning on CERN again. And this time we're going to like do more power. And so everyone in the conspiracy world was very concerned and they turned it on. And so far, who knows? I don't know. Are we real right now? Who knows? But it's weird because what that coincides with is the Georgia Guidestones. Do you guys remember what the Georgia Guidestones are? DJ. Kalima. Yeah. About maybe a month ago, Sean covered them. Yeah. Do you want to give us a quick rundown? Basically these very mysterious monolithic stones in Georgia that have a set of rules for how the human race should live in the event of an apocalypse. And no one knows who put them there, how they got there. They're very odd. And they basically like outline a world government and very like conspiratorial themes Yeah. In the world. Okay. This morning, I believe, DJ, do you want to pull up the article in our notes? Can you read us that title? That's a little salacious, but this one's salacious. Go ahead and read it from the New York post, but it says satanic Georgia guidestones partially destroyed in early morning bombing. The one you gave me was New York Times, and we don't have a subscription to that. So, can you pull uh, up? Yeah, I'm about this to pull for stream it up. so they can see. Guys, someone, something lit off an explosion and destroyed a huge chunk of the Georgia Guidestones. Wonder which language it was that got destroyed. Because each tab or tablet has a language of those same instructions on one side and the other around the whole length of it. Very spooky that I got blown up. I definitely think there's more going on behind the scenes. There's more going on to this. Their solution to the to it exploding is they took the whole thing down. I think there's a couple videos, DJ. Oh, there's a video. Do we want to watch real quick? I think this might just be showing. Video two might show the entire thing in our notes. Hmm. Hmm. So they're like, oh, this is an eyesore now. Let's take it all down. There's no sound. It's all good. So we're watching a video of a helicopter circling the damage after the bombing. Yeah, video one showing them taking it down if you want to throw that up. Guys, this is big events in the conspiracy world. Who knows the ramification? I'm being a little dramatic, but 
Well, if they could really see the future, wouldn't they have known that this was going to happen? Maybe they did. And what if they put it somewhere else as well? Like in the middle of the Utah desert. I could see that. Oh, damn, there it goes. Dude, those are thick too. This thing was built to last millennia. <laughs> but not a tractor. Despite an explosion in tractor. <laughs> Anyway, crazy update. Yeah, super wild. Definitely not something people were expecting. Who knows what it means? If you know, let us let us. Dude, this is on the first time in history where tablets have been broken. <gasps> Tell us more. Uh, piggybacking on our conversation last week with the <laughs> prophets, <gasps> biblical prophets. Didn't Moses like smash the tablets or the something? Original commandments before he had to go and get some simpler Bro, ones. What? Oh my gosh! What were the extra commandments? What happened? Wait. What? Yeah, he came down with his OG commandments. There were more and than then, 10? Yeah, yeah. There were like a bunch of them on there. And this then is what happened. He sees people all like worshiping a golden calf. And he's like, nah. Throws them down and then goes back to the mountain because he's not about that. Moses leaves them. They're like, dope. We're religious. We're doing the right religion. Goes up the mountain, talks to God, and comes down. And by the time he comes down, they full-blown worshiping idols, idolatry, <laughs> crazy, <laughs> sex magic. Who knows? Full on animals. And he's, he's like, like, y'all can't handle these. And he throws them shits and breaks them. And then he goes, gets simple ass commands. Some 10 commandments and comes back down. <sighs> That's crazy. Cause we couldn't even do. So we're not going to get the same Georgia Guidestones. Probably. Chill Moses, dude. Yeah. Go visit that burning bush again. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Damn. Uh, on another note, real quick, Brittany, delete this. The food's here. Ooh, cool. Okay. Let's hang out with chat. Let's yep. eat. And uh, <laughs> then we'll transition into stories. All right. For the podcast, guys, let's get into stories to determine what order we tell our stories. We roll a 20 sided die. Highest number goes first and so on and so forth. There are now consequences, consequences for a 20 and consequences for a one. I don't like that, dude. <laughs> That, uh, that means someone like gifted subs or something. Ooh, that's one of my options. I liked. That's. I tried to not make that sound while we do the actual episode part. That's fine. But um. Anyway, we're rolling our twenty sided die. The roll. Please, for the love of God. Eighteen. I got a fifteen. Charles got a nine. <sighs> we avoid the ghost pepper. So it's me, Charles. Or me, Sean, then Charles tonight. Let's go. Yeah. Kalima, you ready? Yeah. BB boy, chilling in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't like it. All right. This person uh, is remaining anonymous for legal uh, causes, legal uh, reasons. Damn. But this, in this involves uh, her and her. Uh, boyfriend of four years. Uh, let's uh, let's call this girl Jane. So uh, Jane and her boyfriend of four years. At the time this happened, she's 22. He's 24. Young couple in love. She they, ju they just moved in together after dating for a few years. So things are moving and uh, she's working. She's happy. She enjoys her job at the, the cafe. And uh, she comes home, boyfriend makes dinner for her, which he rarely does. It's nice. Um, she's enjoying it. It's uh, one of her favorite dinners is curry. And he makes her favorite dessert, which is a specific cake. That's so, a lot of effort. Trace Lee Chase. Homeboy, uh, <laughs> Trace Lee Chase. Homeboy <laughs> showing up for his girl. Uh, and things are good. Uh, she wakes up the next morning. She, she didn't have a good sleep. I think it's that time of the month for her too, she mentions. And about two months ago, she was hospitalized for a burst ulcer. Ooh. So just like imbalance in hormones, not good sleep, like history with that, that she's still kind of recovering from. She's not feeling very well. Um, she goes outside to have a cute little garden. And uh, in the garden... She finds like whole fruit that they don't uh, grow in that garden. It's fruit that they bought. So she comes back inside and goes to boyfriend. She's like, why is this? I don't know. Apple 
here in the and he's like, there's actually a family of mice. Uh, instead of them eating, our guard I just decide to put food out for them. So they continue to do that. She she puts out food for the mice. O- over that day, over the time of that day, she starts feeling more ill. She comes home. Boyfriend continues to take care of her. Uh, she's trying to figure out what's what's going on. But by, by the time night comes, she's feeling way worse than she did in the morning. Goes to sleep. Doesn't sleep very well. Wakes up again. Feeling very not good. Um, she tries to call in off of work. Nobody can cover her. So she goes in anyway. Trooper. While working there, a friend walks in. Says, whenever you're free, I need to speak to you. Uh, there's a customer inside the store. Wait till they leave. She cleans up. She's like, okay, nobody's here. What's up? This friend is actually boyfriend's friend. Okay. Very unusual for him to just pop in to her work at the cafe. And when he came in, he seemed like this is a very pressing matter. It's like, I need to talk to you now. So coast is clear. We're good now. He pulls up his phone and shows her a text conversation with her boyfriend. She's reading through it. While she's reading through it, she's clearly shook. And he's catching her up and saying, I had this conversation with your boyfriend last night or this morning. Friend says, your partner has been collecting slugs from the fruit he's been leaving in the garden, blending them up and putting them in your food. So he tells, boyfriend tells friend, friend is very concerned, finds her at work, tells her, shows her the conversation. She's feeling very confused, grabs the, I don't know if she grabs the screenshots, but she goes home. She confronts said boyfriend and tells him what she heard. And all he could do was blame her for snooping around. He's like, why are you looking through my messages? Nope. She's feeling very ill. So she goes to urgent care early the next morning. She, she gets an appointment at about 6 a.m. They do some, they run some blood work, uh, among some other tests, uh, along with a very high temperature at that point. She was, uh, had like high levels of, uh, is it metaldehyde? Something that's not supposed to be in there, you know? Um, she made an appointment with a cardiologist, take a look at her heart, uh, and she's still dealing with her burst ulcer from two months ago, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, she contacts police. They take a detailed report. They go to the house, try to talk to him. He refuses to talk. And he says, I'm only talking to my friend. So he continues to talk to friend, even though friend is like spilling the beans to girlfriend, like after the fact. You know, because he's a good friend. Um, a that's funny. Friend. It's like, yeah, dude, I'm here. I'm listening. I get you can you can talk to me. <laughs> it snitches, you know. Talks to girlfriend, and he gathers all this information that is just ramping up the situation to like a higher and higher level of uh, just him being a disgusting human. So, apparently. A few months after they moved in together, boyfriend thought he would start doing some experiments on his girlfriend just because he thought it was funny. Oh, no. And here's a list of some of the things that he confessed to doing. Dude. Started with spitting on her toast. No. Rude. Like breakfast. Stop right there. Spit on it. No more. Straight to she jail. Eat it. Unaware of the spit on the toast. Maybe you like rubbed uh, it in a little bit with the butter. I can't uh, believe it's not butter. <laughs> um, she was taking uh, beta blockers. She's on uh, medication and he was replacing the pills, emptying them out and just filling them up with salt. This instead. is psycho behavior. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next in line, number three, he was her medication holder. 
So he was controlling how much she was taking, when she was taking it. So with a lot of her medication, he was like switching them out with different things, not giving her the things that she, she was supposed to be getting. Next, she has IBS and found that going vegetarian really helped with that. So she's been vegetarian for a while. He also confessed to switching her vegan nuggets and sausages with real nuggets and sausages at times. That's petty, dog. It really is a miracle burger or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of pets, they had a giant African land snail. Have you ever seen those? Uh, like the, I had no idea that's pet. Snail or people. slug, dude? I do, I do know people who have like these as pets, though. It's no weird. Way. Let's take a look real quick. Oh, yeah. <sighs> that's they had it in like a tank. For those just listening, this thing is the size of a hand. It's like a softball with Gary coming out from SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a real life Gary. Yeah. Disgusting. So they had a pet African land snail. Uh, a while ago, it went missing. The top of the lid wasn't secured. They couldn't find it. Uh, devastating to her. But the real story that he confessed to was him taking it out, scraping it out of the tank, blending it up, and putting it in uh, her curry. I thought he was being sweet. Uh. Put the blended up snail in her curry. People eat snails, though. That's That can't be that bad. Escar, no. No. <laughs> S car go away. Um, at one point, he took her toothbrush and scrubbed the toilet, put it back, and then he quickly made the decision to wash it or replace it with a new toothbrush because he thought that was too far. Oh, okay. that was too far. Yeah, standards. Yeah. This guy's lame as hell. <laughs> He's like, want to be Dennis the Menace? <laughs> this guy's lame. I hate him. Yeah. Also, I was thinking, is, is she dating uh, Ron Weasley? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Eight <a> slugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one experience uh, with a medical pro- professional, it sounds like there were multiple, but one of them that she was working with, uh, she said, I've tried talking to one of my doctors, but they won't really listen to me and said it was a good thing as I was overweight anyways. Uh, say that again. What? I have tried talking to my doctor or one of my doctors, but they won't really listen to me and said it was a good thing as I was overweight anyways. What? Get a new doctor. <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> uh, I have what no doctor I'm says speechless. that? And what doctor is like, okay, lay off the nugs. Yeah. <laughs> eat the slugs. Listen, fatty. <laughs> Listen, fat. um, Had to be Filipino. You've really yeah. gained some weight since no, those the last time I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> Not the doctors. Those are the nurses. Um, she moved into a new apartment. Uh, broke up with her boyfriend. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. I have uh, some screenshots of other things that she mentioned. Um, this is making my blood boil. I hope we get some restitution. One, the, the one part that makes my blood boil is here. She says, I feel really sick to my stomach. I don't understand why he would do this. This is so out of character for him. I asked why he was doing it, and he accused me of snooping through his messages, uh, which I would never do, and got so angry at me for not being able to take a joke. I feel disgusting. I love him to pieces, but I just don't understand his way of thinking just now. I think I'm overreacting. <gasps> no, sweetie. No. He, he says he didn't no. know why he did this and that he does love me truly and that he felt compelled to do it which I understand as I suffer from OCD and get uh, compulsions and impulsions and that he really loves taking care of me and he feels it's his purpose and he didn't mean to cause serious harm. He promises he never did any of this to our animals. I think he just blended up the pet. I just think he could be stressed as I have mental health issues that could be, could have caused something in him to break from too much stress. It's not for us to judge. That's the most blood boiling part to me. Like, that uh, she was like, can we use the term gaslit in this situation? Yeah. Yeah. Her being manipulated, thinking like she triggered his behavior. No, yeah. he's just a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone in the uh, chat agrees too. But she moves into a new place. She's doing well now. One thing that was very traumatizing is she moved into the new place 
she would wake up every morning to slugs in her house, which feels very, uh, not very, but feels kind of paranormal. Yeah. And she talked about how like she like tried, apparently like copper tape is a thing. Put them in, you know, she said that didn't work. Uh, all didn't these, work? yeah, she said, tried all these things and it wasn't working. And finally, like it just kind of fizzled out. Like they stopped coming by. <laughs> They're like, nah, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> good. Uh, Maybe they're just trying to make their way out the whole time. Yeah. But they're so slow. Get away from her boyfriend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, trying to make their way the whole time. Like, oh. we're trying to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you trapped us in here with the copper tape. <laughs> um, but yeah, she uh, broke up with him. Continued life as normal. I don't know if they pressed charges on uh, on the boyfriend. That was that. And I, f- I found that on Reddit, she was, I haven't shared a Reddit story in a very long time, but uh, I found that completely disturbing. And she was posting that, asking for advice. And like, even in the way she, I don't know, she sound like she is 22, but like the way she, I don't know, handled all of this sounds like she was pretty young and like was just seeking advice, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, she said, because this is ongoing and I've been talking to police, they told me not to like say who I am, where I live, my boyfriend. So that's why I like kept her anonymous. But yeah. you do your digging, you can find the store on Reddit. She also, before she moved out, she found under the sink a jar of slugs that were at that point dead. But she was like, why is there a jar of slugs under my sink? because he was going to use them at some point. And she posted that picture. Oh. And it's like nothing special. It's exactly Just, what you think. It's yeah. a jar of slugs. But validating. Yeah. Dude, disgusting. Yeah. Uh, we're not the ones that like give advice, but everyone out there, you deserve love. You deserve to be treated right and healthy. And your actions don't take away people's agency. So, yeah. Don't allow yourself to convince yourself that because of something you did cause someone else to do. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Illegal on so many levels, unethical on even more levels. Mm-hmm. I even think about like, there's like food law about like tampering, tampering food law. And almost. he's oh, yeah. like medicine there was a, holder too, right? So yeah. that's gotta be like. Even more so. Yeah. It's like the steward of that. Uh, like I remember there was like a small trend it didn't last long because those people were getting lit up for it. Thank goodness. But like the girl who uh, was in the grocery store and would like take off the cap of ice cream and lick the ice cream and put it back in the freezer. Uh, yeah. Even something like couple that. Couple years in jail. Yeah. Someone Food tampering. In chat. Yeah. So in chat or not in chat, uh, while in the comment section of this post that I found on Reddit, uh, people were commenting uh, similar situations. Why don't you go ahead and read this article for me, Sean, give me a sec. Yeah. Oh, I have that pulled up on my screen. Oh, really? They talked about this on Rogan like a day ago. He ate a slug on a dare, became paralyzed and died. Actually, I feel like I've heard about this before. Yeah. This young Australian kid was dared by his friends to eat a slug. And he goes, surely it can't be too, too bad. I'll do it. Pops it in his mouth, puts him into a coma for over a year. And then he he comes back paralyzed he like is super impaired and then eventually it took his life holy hell yeah, he died of eating a slug very slow death because a slug had like a parasite damn not worth no nope. not worth and it's a uh, uh tembo real quick in chat uh mentioned one part that i forgot to include but uh later on the boyfriend was diagnosed with aspd aspd is like uh by proxy ASPD? it sounds like munchausen by proxy no that's a little different ASPD, antisocial personality disorder, uh, sometimes called sociopathy. It's a mental disorder in which a person consistently shows no regard for right and wrong, ignores the rights and feelings of others. Uh, They show no guilt or remorse for this behavior, and it uh, proved true because he found the entire situation humorous till the end. Checks out. But uh, this reminded me of a time... (laughs) And uh, I didn't have time to find this video. It's out there somewhere. <laughs> but I have a video of me on my mission in the Philippines with a sister missionary. And we were dared by the zone to eat these bugs. And I had like a 
dragonfly and she had like a grasshopper and we both ate it and we luckily didn't uh, die did, well we didn't get anything like i didn't throw up i didn't have the runs i didn't like have a cough or a headache or anything the next like yeah after that neither did she but i remember her eating the grasshopper and like that's crunchy but like blue stuff came out Ugh. like vivid blue flavor came out of it and i was like that's crazy i'm glad i got the dragonfly uh but i, I was just thinking i was like damn that could have been us and it's like i don't know especially was, like a filipino dragonfly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically had bug loot dude <laughs> bug loot. <laughs> but i ate that thing and uh i survived or did luckily you? <sighs> wake up dj wake up. Oh, wake up i was a 20 year old and uh was stupid and still kind of am we all make mistakes but i'm uh, glad yours didn't cost you your life yeah that video is somewhere of us <laughs> eating it and that's Freaking uh, wild. That that's my story. Change of pace. Ooh, Very terrifying though. Absolutely disturbing. Dude. Yeah. yeah. If I found out there were slugs in my damn tikka masala, <laughs> oh, f- dude, I am going ham <laughs> yeah. on whoever that's did not that. A I joke, will. Dude. I will like beat you within an inch of death <laughs> if I found that out. I believe it, baby. And then I would die <laughs> <laughs> soon after. <laughs> uh, I've been to the hospital twice in the last year. It's like. How many, you how many, can't, uh, you can't survive. Uh, all my right luck now. is used Not up. Slugs, dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So dude, that's freaking wild. Holy cow. Is that you tonight? That's me. Crazy. Pull up chat. Yeah. They got anything good to say. They've been going off. Chat is like getting harder and harder to manage because so many people are talking, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So we appreciate it guys. A lot of people just being like, wow, that's red flags run. That's disgusting. I never got a uh, food tampering. Yeah, I would that's agree. so dumb. Tembo read that story too. She also that's saw it cool. on Reddit. She said, holy shit, I read this yesterday. Yo. It was like trending. Someone, this is happening live. Someone just messaged us on our D- Discord saying the day CERN was turned on, a green storm appeared in a city. If what? you want to check, they sent a, a something to Discord. A green storm? Yeah. In general, what's a green storm? I don't know. Green storm in South Dakota one day after CERN was turned on. Green, there's no link, they just have the picture. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, no, no, it's there. South Dakota's is it derecho? Is that the name for the storm? You know how they'd be naming storms, (laughs) naming storms, dude, Dude, like radio stations or some shit. (laughs) (laughs) Katrina's coming. Derecho brings green sky and strong winds. Dude. That's not like out of the norm though. Like there have been like storms with green Look at skies that. before. Show the picture online or for the peoples. Ooh. That's dude. They're living in Hawaiian punch. Marches <laughs> straight up. St. Patty's Day is a couple months ago. <laughs> yeah. No, they're a little that. late on this. Yeah. <laughs> the Irish. This is their response. Allegedly, their they actually turned CERN on a second time between 2012 and now I and knew. it was 2019 right before the vid <gasps> there's some dots you could connect them that's all i'll say what's the green storm <laughs> it's like the lost like power ranger green dude. lantern it's the megazord <laughs> is that a is that a bane from the old batman <laughs> <laughs> green storm yeah with poison ivy, dude. Yeah, poison ivy. <laughs> That's when the Hulk eats Mexican food. Ah. <laughs> the green storm. That, that. That's what that and is. And with that shitty ass joke, literally <laughs> shitty ass joke, uh, who's next? I'm next. Okay. All right, guys. I also have another story that is maybe a little bit off the norm for what I would usually tell. Cool. Let's get unnormal. In a recently declassified military document, I was wondering when we were going to dive into this bitch. There is record of a strange encounter in North Korea. Wait, real quick. Is this the declassified CIA documents? Um, it, the guy I got it from didn't say which it was, but I'm assuming it was because this just recently. I think they have up. a specific name. And at some point we need to tackle them and report because there yeah. is so much insanity in there. Yeah. But this is exciting. So I'm imagining, I've never heard of this. I'm imagining, yes, it's those documents because they're recently declassified. But in December 1974, 
a special forces unit was sent on a search and destroy mission in northern North Korea in a demilitarized zone. They were to follow this winding river through the forest. Where is this again? So sorry. Northern North Korea. Northern North Korea. They went to Korea? North North. North. (laughs) Yeah. They went to North North. North. So Wint Staples, not on <laughs> Wint Staples. He's from the uh, the what is it LBC or CCP? <laughs> <laughs> so their task is to follow this winding river through the forest, find the enemy target, and neutralize them upon encounter. They started early morning on December seventeenth, nineteen seventy four, following this river, and they traveled down the river for several hours. At one point, though, the squad is halted by their squad leader with a you know a halt symbol, stop. And as everyone stops, the forest is eerily silent. <laughs> like no forest sounds, no bugs or birds or anything like that. So the squad leader tasks two separate groups of scouts to head up the river and scout for enemy ambushes or if the enemy is waiting for them at any point further up the river. After the scouts got up ahead of them, they continued down the course for several more hours until a point where night was falling, was falling. They left the riverbed to kind of go up into this forest a little bit to a previously set rendezvous point with the scouts as they get there though the scouts are not there so they radio out to the scouts and at this point they discover the scouts are MIA no one is answering their radio at this point they assume that the scouts were intercepted by the enemy and in fear of them also being ambushed by the enemy they decide to head back to the base for reinforcements. So they make their way back through the forest, following the river as closely as they can and as quickly as they can. They're about halfway back to the base. This is after several hours of traveling. And the squad leader once again halts the team and then points to them to all look up into the trees. As the soldiers look up into the trees, They're terrified by what they see. As they look up, it appears that a group of dark entities had surrounded them in the trees. The leader, first thinking they were rebel soldiers, orders the men to fire. So they start firing up at these figures up in the trees, but none of them made contact. And all of a sudden, all of the figures are gone. So the squad leader orders the men to move and they start sprinting as quickly as they can to get away from the area. The entities seem to follow them though. Every couple of minutes or so, the soldiers would have to stop, turn around and let off a barrage back up into the trees. And as long as that was happening, not a single casualty on the enemy side, nothing was killed. They made it. An addition. That sucks. <laughs> They're all stormtroopers. Cannot hit anything. <laughs> now, they make it another hour or so on this trek back to the base. And all of a sudden, the forest falls silent again. And then on their six, they hear crunching leaves and crackling sticks behind them. So they all turn around. And all they can see is darkness into this forest. And then something comes out of the forest. A small group of humanoid creatures walking towards them, each about eight or nine feet tall. In Korea? (laughs) Like four Koreans. (laughs) (laughs) Kim Jong. Four. Quattro. (laughs) Un, dos, tres, cuatro. (laughs) Their arms were long and ended with three fingers with claws on each. Their skin had a slight yellow hue. Okay, I'll check out. Their, 
Their faces were flat with yeah. two slits where the nose should have been. Eyes or nose? <laughs> <laughs> there were big black eyes. At this point, though, the creatures seem to be uninterested in the soldiers. It's a fusion human. <laughs> <laughs> And they walked right past the group. Yeah, they're of soldiers. uninterested. They just walked. They, just by. they walked. walked past they this. walked through the group and kept walking. And then, <laughs> as they pass, the squad leader orders his men to fire on them. Well, um, that's also on point because Asians are hella, hella like spatially unaware. <laughs> Peripherals are bad. Is yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> Out my face. So, Out my flat face, DJ. <laughs> As the soldiers fire on these creatures, the creatures turn around and just look at the men. Like, have they not proven that they are like higher? As bullets bounced off of their bodies. Damn, y'all had the chance to live. <laughs> so now y'all are asking for yeah. it. The soldiers eventually ran out of ammo with the clips that they had. They're just like, and as they stopped firing, the creatures. Walked off into the forest. Oh, y'all hardly, yeah. <laughs> just Homer Simpson one going through the finger, bushes, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> just, Homer just Simpson, one. dude, big dude with yellow. <laughs> Once the creatures were gone, the group speedily made their way back to base, sprinting all the way. When they made it back to the base, all the men were then debriefed. They were determined to have been of sound mind, and each of the men had the same story. There was, however, no record in these reports of what happened to the missing scouts. I was going to say scouts. There was no record. And the only real evidence of this encounter was the testimonies of these men. And this is in declassified documents. And allegedly the encounters continued in the area with at least two additional encounters by different groups in, in and around the same time period. And that was the end of this story. Like he didn't share. Uh, and, I got this story from Night God three 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 on Instagram hey. and TikTok. He's got a huge following, and he shares a lot of like these Dope. declassified stories and stuff like that. That's fire, firepower. Uh, <laughs> Get dude, to that, the chopper. That that reminded me of when I was at the grocery store this weekend for July Fourth. Just gaggers getting cleared off the shelves. <laughs> um, there was a family, and they were right in front of me checking out. Got the self serve checkout. I had like one, one big thing of seaweed, and they like somehow got through their whole cart before me. And I was like, "What? Like, how did this happen?" <laughs> and I'm following them, and the kids are all off doing their own thing. Like, one's playing with I don't know, like a gumball machine. I don't know, uh, just like off doing their own thing. And they start the mom and dad start walking away, and he straight up starts doing the same call signs. What do you mean? Yeah. Like snapping his shit. Like he's t all Tom Clancy with it, <laughs> calling his kids, like doing these like crazy, like, and then they all just like turned around, walked towards him, and they like moved <laughs> as a unit. That's, and cool. I was like, dude, this is great. This is Utah, July 4th. I'm telling you, dude. Like, <laughs> they could have called like a call strike on my ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> SEAL team family of six. Yeah, dude. <laughs> SEAL team family of six. And it was, uh, it was crazy to see like how efficient they were at checking out. <laughs> They've Dude, done before your one thing of seaweed. How quick are these four girls? How old, how old are the children? Hands, uh, the oldest might have been like 12. The oh, youngest dang. was like five. But how like they followed his actions like everything. And I was like, Dude, I know uh we know uh police forces that are way less organized, <laughs> you know, <laughs> than this family. A couple come to mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh dude, you, two things. You might have witnessed like Russian assets or something <laughs> like posing to be American celebrity. Like that's crazy. Yeah. I was like, this is, I'm in a grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> Two, I'm in a Smith's grocery store. <laughs> were they deaf? And was that sign language? No, he, uh, he whistled at one point. At one were point. they doing ASL? <laughs> <laughs> I go up and, and he's like, like, what is this weird language? language? <laughs> Thank Did, you. Actually, that's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it, dude, it, was that not Sean's story? Just the plot of like Predator, dude. That's, oh, that's dude. I don't yeah. know. That's what I meant by get to the chopper. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Like I don't know if these were leaked at any point in the 70s or 80s, mm -hmm. or someone else heard them. But that's what it reminded me. Hollywood of Hollywood well. was just prepping our minds. They were grooming us, bro. Could have been. 
Um, the guy though, Night God three three three, says that his opinion was that they were um, testing out uh, super soldier suits or something like Cloaking, that. Cloaking super, yeah. Because I've definitely there's been stuff like that. Oh, you before. mean like governments? Yeah. Ooh. And maybe that's why they never show, or maybe that's where Rogue, the scouts went. Here's the test: literally, or, just walk through those guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna shoot at you. You'll be okay. Just keep going. <laughs> uh, Rogan talked. He had an ex Marine on who was a part of uh, classified operations within the CIA and within the government military. And he brought up project Iron Man and Rogan oh, was yeah. like, yeah. what do you mean? Like what's project Iron Man? And he goes, we were, were building Iron Man. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, we're building that suit. And he talked about, he couldn't like, like go into it too deep. Yeah. But basically the military has like tried to create an exoskeleton suit that like gives you superhuman strength, uh, bulletproof obviously. And it's power. They were like, how do they power that? And he said, they have nuclear batteries in the suit. Holy cow. Yeah. So wild, but who knows? Yeah. Could who be. knows? That's what like definitely predator came to mind. Yeah. Like potentially these were aliens for real, but like more than likely maybe government, uh, experiments. And we'll never know. Kind of makes you wonder, like, all the scary stories in North Korea that we're missing out on. Like, kind of. Like, I was just thinking, like, this is the only thing to come out of North Korea since, like, This is where my ever. conspiracy conspiracy theorist ass goes to. Like, when you're saying that, I was like, holy shit, what if North Korea is not real? The story of it, and it's literally like a blocked off no-fly zone to, like, conduct experiments and or commune with the aliens like i don't know maybe aliens are there's only like a select location within north korea that they'll take reporters yeah, to yeah, and yeah. stuff like that who knows i don't know because i was looking at like google earth and legitimately the light is completely different like south like korea it's just like it's photoshopped just like, in it's placed on top or what no, no no i'm just talking about like light pollution oh so like south korea is just lit up at night north korea black something's going then you down. get to china Lit up again. In the NK, baby. Yeah, dude. I mean, they don't let their people have electricity. No, absolutely not. Like they, that's they, they drive they like us. wood burning cars. Oh my God. <laughs> have you seen those? <laughs> no. Like you bake a pizza. Bro, well, and- gas is so expensive. <laughs> we might have <laughs> to move this. smart, though. This bitch, dude. dude, the whole conspiracy about uh, like water engines. Oh. I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, we're going to get, we're going to yeah. get canceled by the government, dude. Let's just say, uh, if you come up with an engine that runs on water, don't tell talk to take out life just, insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Someone come smoke your ass before you dissolve into nothingness. Last, uh, conspiracy before we move on. Uh, I don't know if this is real, but apparently a former aide of a president who was homies with Epstein recently committed suicide. And they were like, how did he commit suicide? No worries. He took himself 30 miles away from his home, beat the shit out of himself, tied an extension cord around his own neck, placed himself up into a tree and until he was unalived and then shot himself in the chest with a shotgun. Dude, some people are just really hard to take themselves out. (laughs) 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 Okay, moving on. Sean, is that you? That's me for tonight. Cool. Appreciate it. That was fun. Chat, what up? What up? Y'all got anything good to say? <laughs> Idiots have anything good to say? <laughs> Dude, there's this one guy I follow who after every video he does is like, follow me, f- idiot. <laughs> and I had to follow like, him yes. after the first time. I was yes. gonna say, that would get it's, you. I see you being like, <laughs> That dude also has okay. four daughters and like gives them call signs in the grocery store. <laughs> dude, the third um, thing you should have done is followed those fools because that's who you're going to have yeah, to you need to join align them. yourself I was, with in I, an apocalypse. There was a second where I was looking at the back of his shirt and the back of his shirt was like, that That checks out. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember what it was. It's just so funny. It's like something super overtly like, you know, Sigma alpha Sigma Ligma balls. <laughs> um, Oselli said in that podcast, the guest said uh, that the technology we are seeing now is technology that the military has had for at least 15, 20 years. I believe already it. makes perfect sense. Like, oh, no, nah, it's just gonna make a dumbass joke. Not worth <laughs> it anymore. Just cause I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. No, Bob it's all Lazar good. talks about that. Like, Who? Oh yeah. The yeah. alien dude. Yeah, yeah. He talks about, like the kind of stuff they were working on, and then like ten years later, it became a like standard issue. iPhones, an element that wasn't discovered. He was like, "There's an undiscovered element," and people were like, "You're an idiot." Come to find out, we discovered that shit like twenty years after he named it. Yes. Yep. 
All right, guys, me tonight. My stories, like I told you before, sent in from a uh, listener. Short, sweet, terrifying. Sent in two of them. Uh, This person said, hey, kind of upset with you guys. Here's why. Uh Uh-oh. You guys tell us to ask everyone we know, do you have any scary stories? Which we do. And you guys probably should. But I might add a caveat after this. Because they said, I've been doing that. And I didn't like all the answers I got. (laughs) Uh, He got both of these stories within the last week by doing this. And he's like, I don't know if I'm going to continue to ask people because I got a little bit more than I bargained for. Yikes. (laughs) Some of them are personal. So he said, please, please, please. I mean, they said, please, please, please keep me anonymous. So that's all I'll say. You gonna tell us afterwards? Yeah, bro, I got it. <laughs> First one asked an EMT homie, good friend of his, you have any scary stories? And the guy stops and goes, Yes, dude, I do. His homie's an EMT, emergency responder. Thank you for your service. But uh, uh very good dude. Very good EMT. He's so good that when he's off duty, he keeps the radio with him. Just in case he's closer to an incident, something going down than the ambulance, straightway he'll go. He's a guardian angel. Dude, he's the man. Minute man. Hey, yo. So, one day, he's maybe working in the garage, doing things around the house. Here's the call. Here's that there's a disturbance at these apartment buildings, and he knows the ambulance is way far. So, straightway to the car, to the scene. Out the scene, he runs up the stairs of the apartment to the open apartment. And what he sees is a group of cops surrounding a young woman. All of this is happening so fast. He's very focused on the victim. So he says, what I can say is the interior of this home, very dark furnishes, Gothic, very dark imagery everywhere. But that's not what he notices most. He notices a young woman on the floor wailing and chanting in an unrecognized language in a voice that doesn't seem like it would come out of this body. Cops are trying to subdue her, but they're hesitant for good reason. Because this woman, while chanting in another language and another voice, at some point before he got there, had reached up to her face, plunged four of her fingers into her eye sockets, and pulled out both of her eyes. And she's holding those eyes like towards the police. Straight holding Silent them? Hill. That's like a, what's that? The hand on a- Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, that's what it is, yeah. So needless to say- He's a little preoccupied with this lady. Yeah. Rushes in, helps subdue, sedate, gurney, gets her in the back of the ambulance that eventually shows up, and she's taken away. He's really good friends with the EMT who showed up with the ambulance. A couple weeks go by, and he sees that guy, and he's like, yo, how about that freaking call last week? That lady was crazy. And the EMT stops. Like the EMT's homie EMT. Yeah. Who ended up taking the lady to the hospital. So EMT two, EMT two stops, looks at the hero EMT and says, dude, you have no idea. EMT two said, we get her the hospital. We get her subdued. We get her into a room, but straightway more calls. So we leave the hospital. I don't even think about it until later that night. I get back to the hospital and I'm passing her room. And I remember, oh yeah, I don't know what it was, but I felt compelled to say something. So I step into the room and the lady is sitting there with a bloody bandage wrapped around her, her head, covering her empty, now empty eye sockets. And the lady's like clutching her knees, rocking back and forth. And he's like, oh man, she's so distraught, dude. Like her life is fundamentally different. So I felt compelled to be like, hey, listen, it's, it's going to be okay. There's so many resources for the visually impaired. I know it's different. You'll be okay. There's resources for you out there. The lady rocking stops and slowly like unfolds her arms and puts her hands down and looks right at where he's standing. 
And she says, what do you mean? I can see you perfectly. Okay, bye. <laughs> and EMT2 just says like, totally. Bet. Backs out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> runs away. <laughs> but he told EMT1, hero EMT, he was like, yeah, uh, I don't want to see that Bro, person how again. How many fingers <laughs> am I holding up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, he was freaked out. Rightfully so. Dude, the guy, our listener who sent that in, he said like he got told that story like two days ago by his homie. And after getting that story, he decided to like keep asking other people. He's like, wow, that was pretty surprising. So I'm going to keep asking. And he decided to ask his mom. He said him and his mom were driving along in a car. And I think it was kind of a long drive. And he looks at her and he goes, hey, Ma, did you ever play with the Ouija board? And his mom, without looking off the road, without even looking over at him, just holding the steering wheel. Nope. Uh, Lies. Lies. Mom, I'm going to call bullshit. He said he asked this because all growing up to an almost suspicious amount, he was warned, do not play with Ouija boards. (laughs) So that made him think like, maybe there's a reason. Ma, have you ever played? No. A couple silence, a couple minutes go by. Not buying it. Mom, do you have any scary stories you haven't told me about? No. A little too fast, mom replies. (laughs) He doesn't press it. He sits there for a couple minutes. And after a couple minutes of silence, without even looking at him, mom just goes, your grandmother was into seances. (laughs) That's why you only ever visited her one time a year. He said instantly, gears in his head click. Memories flashing. He said it was like almost in a movie, like when you see someone like everything started to click, dots started to connect, and all these scenes from his childhood visiting his grandma, he was like, holy shit. So let me describe his grandma for you. His grandma lived alone. Dude, this is hereditary. (laughs) His grandma lived alone. She lived on an island. She lived hours, like it would take hours to get to her. That's dope. She lived in an A-frame cabin in the middle of the woods. He said the cabin was large and dope. Large and dope. That's how I like to I like that, dude. (laughs) Like my women. (laughs) She had gray hair that went past her waist. We drove hours to visit her for only an hour at a time. We were never left alone with grandma. These are some of the things he remembered his grandma would tell him growing up. And now keep in mind, he heard these things as a child. So he thought, oh, that's grandma being funny. That's grandma being grandma. That's grandma telling stories. But as an adult and with this new piece of context, it feels different. He said, grandma claimed that the animals around the cabin and on the island were her children. All of the what on the island? Animals Animals were her children were grandma's children. He said, as a child, I thought this was just a weird grandma joke. I remember one time we drove all the way there and after five minutes, they get home or they get to grandma's house. They get inside. They barely say hello. And after five minutes of being there, he said, one of grandma's dogs started growling at me. Grandma looked at the dog. The dog looks intensely at grandma. Grandma looked at mom and said, he, pointing to our friend as a child, is upsetting my children. He needs to leave. Straightway, mom collected everyone, and they turned around and drove hours back. (laughs) Tell your children to eat a dick. (laughs) (laughs) Grandma passed away when our friend was 15. He doesn't know any more about this. But the way he knows that the way grandma died is weird and there's very suspicious circumstances around her death. But he hasn't pressed his mom and I don't think he will. So go ask dad. (laughs) He said, this is all his mom has shared. She's very reluctant to share more. And he says, any time now 
that a woman comes up to me in a parking lot, like hereditary, saying they knew my grandmother. No. That happens? He said, if this happens. Oh. (laughs) They are straight away going to get punched in the throat. (laughs) This happened last week. What? This happened last week? Him asking his grandma. Somebody in chat said 3M legit changed his childhood. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We just. He sent this in saying, I really wanted to send this with Charlie. (laughs) You. (laughs) And I started. I actually started reading that. And when I saw that, I just left it. (laughs) And you you text me like, read this message. Yeah. He said, this happened to me last week. I had these memories out of context. And once my mother had told me about her, it was like a time traveler changes something in the past and in the movies and then gets all these new memories at once. So it was like this great unlocking. Uh, He said, so he doesn't know if he's going to be asking people, especially his family. Do you have any scary stories? And I might add a caveat caveat now to people ask people what their favorite story, scary stories are, but beware that you might hear things you can't unhear and it might literally change your entire childhood. Do you guys have theories? Do you have thoughts? Keep in mind, this is this guy's grandma. So let's be respectful. Oh, like theories on how she just what's going on. Uh, she's probably, uh, am I allowed to say the demon's name on here? Maybe I shouldn't. Okay. never mind. Start s- rhyme it. Uh, Cayman <gasps> probably works with that fool. Okay. That's not what instantly came to my mind, but that's good. Good theory. DJ. No, uh, not enough data for me. Dude, old woman, long white hair, cabin in the woods. She's a witch. Communing communing with animals. I was like, not okay, I was like, no offense. This to me sounds like a potential witch sitch. And he was like, 100%. <laughs> Furthermore, so this sent me down. I said, do you have any theories? Because it sounds like, and I mean this with zero disrespect, is a modern day witch with familiars. Oh yeah. Have you guys ever heard that term? Yep. DJ? Watch Sabrina. <laughs> Go ahead. Have you ever heard that term familiars? Yes. Okay. This sent me, he said, uh, listen to your podcast multiple times through. I concur. And also I kid about blaming you. LOL. She definitely had witchy vibes. And I know there's things that my mom's not telling me. That's all for his two stories, but it sent me down a path. I wanted to learn more about familiars. And so we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive right now into familiars. And that is for bonus patron only. So if you want to hear 3am do a deep dive, rereading a Wikipedia page, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. And discussing familiars and learning more head over to patreon.com slash the 3am pod where for $2 a month or whatever you want, you can become a supporter of the podcast first. And then also you have access to our bonus story, this one, and an entire backlog. So for our regular listeners, we'll be back in a moment. For our patrons, let's hang out. Guys, anything in that story sound familiar? <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, I'm shook. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, a... Like, Shaw, man. Shaw, <laughs> man. Yeah, we're back. Uh, <sighs> I just Sigh. shared a crazy, crazy sexual ride. I'm Inside. trying to move to, to <laughs> Siberia right now. <laughs> yeah. So if you missed, uh, yeah, become a patron. You can hear it. Uh, boys, I think that's it for the night. Yeah. There is one hilarious thing that we didn't bring up, but we might have to just do it next time. No, no preview or yeah, we can preview. save it if you want. Polynesians on Facebook. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have enough for that. I just <laughs> no, have the next one. Week, what MJ told us. Oh, that shit was I forgot. Hilarious. I remember laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Dude, uh, yeah. If you live in a third world country, you shouldn't have social media. Okay, let's go on that next time and maybe we'll come with just a little more context. Even though uh, Kaleem is here. Oh, let's do it. F- it. Okay. Nah, nah. Next time. Okay, next time. Next time. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to come next time too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. More than welcome anytime. Guys, tonight was fun. Appreciate it. A little bit different stories from a couple of us, but still super fun. I love hearing. It doesn't have to be campfire spooky story. It's a, if it's a good story, it belongs on the podcast. Yeah. And that brings me to you, the listener, the viewer. Uh, ask everyone around you if you have any good scary but stories. Be prepared to hear some sh- you don't want to. Yeah. And respectful. Yeah. Anyway, send in your stories. 
keep listening, keep downloading. Real quick, yo, tell them about the story. Oh, guys, uh, it has been brought to my attention that I might be doing something that is a little aggravating, where I tease <laughs> a little too much. I like to give you a little taste of something I'm working on, a story, uh, something crazy. And some people have been like, yo, that shit is annoying, especially when you don't follow through, <laughs> which I totally get. Uh, I have teased a couple times a story that has been brought to me from a coworker and how they pair or how they prefaced it was, yo, I need you to hear my friend's story. Him and his friend experienced something that to this day, one of them goes to therapy for. I'm not making light of therapy. In fact, this made the situation unique because I was like, yo, we don't want to pressure anyone to tell a story they don't want to. Right. Make sure you clear it with your friend. And he goes, I think my friend's down. I'll get back to you. And I, I had like brought that story up and another one of my coworkers was like, I heard that story. And when he told it legitimately, all six of us who were like at the fire when that story was retold, got up and left because something was there. So anyway, all of them. Yeah. They said like all the friends, like barely without discussing, they were like, let's go. And all of them were like, okay, they all left. He said, it's super terrifying, but I got the unfortunate news today that that kid reached out to the kid who did go to therapy forever. And was like, yo, I want to, I want to share this story, but I just wanted to run it by you. And the kid thought for a while and the kid was like, dude, I prefer if you don't. So I was like, cool, I'm going to respect that. we we'll respect it as a community. We're going to respect that. All you need to know is two of them witnessed something out in the forest, uh, a satanic act. It was terrifying and it really affected them. And they, yeah, they just wanted to keep it there. So that's where that's at. Sorry. I'll be more responsible with teasing, but like, dude, I live to troll. So right, sorry. You have to at least have, have to go ahead on the story before you tease it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to have consent. That's right. And we want to consensual storytelling. That's what we do here. Yeah. And, and we talked about this earlier on stream, but it's like, sometimes we're dealing with like lighthearted, super spooky, uh, situations from our listeners. Sometimes we're dealing with like the most traumatic, uh, moments in their life. So like, we want to be respectful of that. We want to have fun. That means us making jokes, making light of serious situations. We're going to make mistakes. Uh, hopefully you guys trust us enough to like understand. We mean no harm. We are just like trying to have fun, trying to bring you a good show. But anyway, with that, I appreciate you all. We all appreciate you. Uh, until next week. Bye. Love you. Be safe. Trust the gut. Watch the back. Be careful out there. Young Kalima. Love you. Uh, bye. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of 3 a.m. If you want to support us, visit our Patreon where patrons have access to exclusive content. If you're not able to support us monetarily, don't worry. This episode is on us. You can still rate and review us on whatever platform you listen to us on. It really does go a long way. You can also follow us on social media. Our handle everywhere, including Patreon, is the 3 a.m. pod. Finally, do you have any scary stories? If so, submit them to our website, the3ampodcast.com. We love any audio or visual aids that can help bring your stories to life. So file uploads are welcome with your written submissions. We're anxious and excited to hear from you.